On December 5th, SpaceX fired its fans up by introducing a new drone ship deluge system hinted at in footage of the Falcon 9 landing. It appears something that we have never seen before in Falcon 9's booster landings, so leaving us with a lot of questions. When did SpaceX start installing this system? Why did they finally use it after more than a decade of launching the Falcon 9? What makes it stand apart from that used on Starship's orbital launch mount? Find out everything in today's episode. No doubt it's hard and difficult to launch a rocket. Rockets need to produce enough thrust to overcome the force of gravity pulling them down. This requires a lot of force, or escape velocity, which is about 3.5 million kilograms, 7.2 million pounds. Depending on the type and size of the rocket, there is a difference in power between them. For example, NASA's Deep Space Rocket, SLS, which is a super heavy lift launch vehicle, requires 8.8 .8 million pounds of thrust. Its next generation, Block 2 configuration, will have a launch thrust of 9.4 million pounds and can lift to 101,000 pounds to deep space. The Saturn V is also a super heavy launch vehicle similar to the SLS with a maximum thrust of 7.6 million pounds. Fast forward to this century, and we have SpaceX's Falcon 9 medium lift rocket with a smaller thrust of more than 1.7 million pounds. When combining three of Falcon 9's core stages, the Super Heavy Lift Launch Vehicle Falcon Heavy was formed with 5 million pounds of thrust at liftoff. Clearly, the modern Falcon Heavy is not as powerful as the traditional rocket, SLS. However, SpaceX has been developing a totally new type of rocket a fully reusable Starship with size and power far superior to NASA's Orange rocket. The first version of Starship featured 16.5 million pounds of thrust, double that of SLS's Block 1. Nevertheless, everything always has two sides. Although the crazy power can benefit the payload capacity and deep space missions, it can simultaneously pose a threat to the ground infrastructure. A typical example is the case of Starship's maiden flight last April, when its immense heat and force at full display did significant damage to Starbase's orbital launch mount, blasting out a sizable crater beneath the structure and raining rocks and other debris down on the surrounding area. To handle this issue, in Flight 2 onwards, the water deluge system has been used beneath the launch pad and it has demonstrated its great performance in protecting against the immense heat and force of Starship launch. After six Starship tests, SpaceX is now confident enough to apply the system to another rocket, the Falcon 9. Footage of the Falcon 9 landing confirms that SpaceX shared on X on December 5th that the engineers sprayed the deck with water before landing to reduce erosion. Does anybody know when they debuted this update to the drone ships? Perhaps after more than 300 rocket landings, the deck began to show signs of erosion, forcing the company to come up with the idea of a water deluge system. Or, SpaceX has plans to increase the Falcon 9's launch rate even more in the coming years, and water could significantly extend the drone ship's lifespan. They have already installed the system recently. At this point, some people have raised interesting questions about this new system while waiting for an official answer from SpaceX. What type of water is being sprayed? Do we think that's seawater or an onboard supply of fresh water? Wouldn't seawater splashing up around the vehicle cause some corrosion or other problems? Almost all answers are towards the use of an endless source of seawater and steamed salt water. Due to the engine's exhaust doesn't sound pretty bad. The steam itself would be pure water. That's how distillation works. However, if it splashes salt water around, it probably won't cause much of a negative impact because presumably Merlin engine bells are some stainless variety of steel. Some even worry that salt water might corrode the deck over time, but bear in mind that the deck does get pretty splashed with seawater on days with rougher seas, so it's not a matter. Some, on the other hand, suppose a drone ship can have an onboard water tank for remote firefighting. The capacity of that barge is pretty huge. 
it wouldn't be any big deal at all to carry thousands of gallons of fresh water in a tank below decks. You could top it up every time they go ashore to drop off the boosters. So how about you? Either seawater or fresh water? Please drop your idea in the comment. Anyway. SpaceX is so clever to utilize such a smart and safe technology to secure its ground infrastructure. The primary function of the system is to absorb and deflect the tremendous acoustic energy produced at liftoff. Rocket engines generate noise levels that can reach up to 180 decibels, creating shockwaves as exhaust gases exceed the speed of sound. The water sprayed onto the launch pad helps mitigate this acoustic energy, protecting both the launch vehicle and its payloads from potential damage caused by these extreme sound levels. Furthermore, heat is also another nightmare. Rocket launches produce extreme heat that can damage concrete and steel structures. The water deluge system serves to cool the launch pad and surrounding infrastructure, preventing thermal damage. For instance, during a launch, approximately 700 cubic meters of water can be released to shield the launch table and other installations from the intense heat generated by rocket engines. In addition to cooling, the water deluge system also functions as a fire suppression mechanism, saturating the area around the launch pad with water just before and during ignition, reduces the risk of fire igniting from hot exhaust gases or other flammable materials present during a launch. This is particularly important given that rocket fuels are highly combustible. Along with footage of the drone ship being sprayed by water, the video also reveals a new record recently achieved by the Falcon 9. It's the 100th time a first-stage booster has landed on Just Read the Instructions drone ship and SpaceX's 380th successful recovery overall. This is a part of a mission to launch the SXM-9 satellite on the morning of December 5th for Sirius XM satellite radio. The payload is the 10th spacecraft launched for Sirius XM and the third of the company's satellites to ride a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket to orbit. That mission marks the 19th flight for this particular booster, shortening the gap between it and SpaceX's most flown booster, which currently holds the record at 24 flights. SpaceX has three barges, two in Florida for launches from the Kennedy Space Center and one in California for flights that lift off from the Vandenberg Space Force Base. The drone ships have rather creative names too. Of course I still love you, just read the instructions, and a shortfall of gravitas. The just read the instructions drone ship didn't have the best start. It was first deployed on January 17, 2016, during the Falcon 9 flight for the Jason 3 mission. Although the booster managed to land on the drone ship, a problem with one of its landing legs caused it to tip over and explode. The drone ship was left a bit battered and a tad burned, but the damage was easily fixed and just read the instructions was able to sail again. The first successful landing for the vessel took place in January 2017 and marked the first successful booster recovery on a drone ship located in the Pacific Ocean. Just Read the Instructions was moved to Florida in December 2019 and since then has been used for missions launched from the East Coast. To date, the Of Course I Still Love You drone ship has hosted the greatest number of successful landings at 112, while a shortfall of Gravitas has hosted 88. After a booster lands on one of SpaceX's drone ships, it's taken back to land where engineers check it over and refurbish it so that it can fly again. Early December also witnessed one of SpaceX's Falcon 9 boosters fly for a record 24th time. This method of reusing a booster instead of building a new one for every mission allows SpaceX to make its satellite deployment services more affordable and also cuts costs for NASA, which pays SpaceX for crew and cargo flights to the International Space Station. Following Falcon 9, SpaceX goes one step further by developing the next-generation Starship rocket. The vehicle was first mentioned in November 2005 under the name BFR, before SpaceX launched its first rocket, the Falcon 1. Later in 2012, 
Elon Musk first publicly announced plans to develop a rocket surpassing the capabilities of the existing Falcon 9. SpaceX called it the Mars Colonial Transporter, as the rocket was to transport humans to Mars and back. In 2016, the name was changed to Interplanetary Transport System, as the rocket was planned to travel beyond Mars as well. The design called for a carbon fiber structure, a mass in excess of 10,000 tons when fully fueled, and a payload of 300 tons to low Earth orbit while being fully reusable. By 2017, the concept was temporarily redubbed the BFR. In December 2018, the structural material was changed from carbon composites to stainless steel, marking the transition from the early design concepts of the Starship. Musk cited numerous reasons for the design change. Low cost, ease of manufacture, increased strength of stainless steel at cryogenic temperatures, and ability to withstand high temperatures. In 2019, SpaceX began to refer to the entire vehicle as Starship, with the second stage being called Starship and the booster Super Heavy. They also announced that Starship would use reusable heat shield tiles similar to those of the Space Shuttle. The second stage design had also settled on six Raptor engines by 2019, three optimized for sea level and three optimized for vacuum. In 2019, SpaceX announced a change to the second stage's design, reducing the number of aft flaps from three to two to reduce weight. In March 2020, SpaceX released a Starship user's guide, in which they stated the payload of Starship to low Earth orbit would be in excess of 100 tons, with a payload to GTO of 21 tons. At present, the Mega Rocket has experienced six testing flights with significant evolutions, most notably in Flight 5 and Flight 6. Flight 5, which occurred in October, was the most successful yet and featured an unbelievable moment as SpaceX performed the first ever catch of the Super Heavy booster by Mechazilla Launch Tower enabling the reuse of a rocket. The primary objective of the fifth test flight was to attempt the first ever return to the launch site and catch the Super Heavy booster and another Starship re-entry and landing burn, aiming for an on-target splashdown of Starship in the Indian Ocean. In Flight 6, SpaceX aims to repeat the same achievement but, eventually, no catch was attempted due to a minor setback on the launch and catch tower. Chiefly, Starship completed another successful ascent, placing it on the expected trajectory. The ship successfully reignited a single Raptor engine while in space, demonstrating the capabilities required to conduct a ship deorbit burn before starting full orbital missions. It successfully made it through re-entry and executed a flip, landing burn, and soft splashdown in the Indian Ocean. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.